Hello everyone. This is Dr. Y. Mohan Rupa, working as a professor in the Department of Computer Science and Engineering from Institute of Aeronautical Engineering, Hyderabad. Today's session on conceptual model of UML. So, to understand the conceptual model of UML, let us see what is the conceptual model of UML, what the requirements of conceptual model of UML, what is the need of a conceptual model of UML. To understand the conceptual model of UML, so the definition a of conceptual model of UML is it is a model which can consist of components and their relationships. So, conceptual model of UML consists of the concepts as well as their relationship is a model of concepts and their relationships as the name of conceptual model means it is a model of concepts and their relationships. Now, what is the need of this conceptual model of UML in the sense UML always gives us language per uh, models. So, develop the models through the UML in the object oriented analysis and design. Object oriented analysis and design through UML, the UML gives us the models. So, that is why without conceptual model of UML, we cannot design that or we cannot develop that models as per object oriented analysis and design. That is why before drawing that UML models, so we need to know about that conceptual model of UML. That is why this conceptual model of UML is very important before going to draw the, the, the diagrams. The conceptual model of UML consists of three major elements. What are the three major elements in the sense? The basic building blocks, UML basic building blocks, rules to connect the building blocks and common mechanisms of UML. So, UML basic building blocks, rules and common mechanisms. So, the concepts of concepts required to draw the UML models in the sense by using the UML building blocks and uh, uh, follow the com rules and apply the common mechanisms, then we have to build the models very easily. Next, the basic building blocks, UML basic building blocks and the com conceptual model of UML, the first element is basic building blocks. Under that basic building blocks, three elements are there. Those are the first one is things, second one is relationships and third one diagrams. These are the three basic building blocks of UML. So, under that, the things are very common basic building block. Things are the very common basic building block. These are also divided into four kinds. What are these four kinds are? So, structural things, behavioral things, grouping things and notational things. Structural things, behavioral things, grouping things and notational things. These are the different kinds of things are there in the EMA. So, relationships. The relationships are also one more basic building blocks of EML. So, without these relationships, without these things, without diagrams, we can cannot uh, build a model. So, that is why these are the very basic concepts of EML. So, relationships are association relationship, mm -hmm. dependency relationship, generalization relationship, realization relationship. These are the various kinds of relationships to build a relation among the concepts. So, next one is diagram. These are also the one of the basic concept of UML. Without diagrams, we can model. Mo the modeling is very difficult. So, the diagrams are also can be categorized as two ways. So, one is structural modeling. Another one is behavioral modeling. So, these are the different basic building blocks of UML. The very most ba basic building block is things. Next one is relationships. Third one is diagrams. So, structural things, 
behavioral things grouping things unnoticed things then the relationships are association relationship dependency relationship generalization relationship realization relationship there are the two kinds of the diagrams are there those are structural diagrams as well as a car behavioral diagrams these are the different kinds of diagrams so comes to structural things what about the structural things so normally structural things are the known parts of uml so it is a graphical language no uml unified modeling language is a graphical language it is a pictorial language everything is also in terms of pictures as well as notations different notations so every language has in parts of nouns so part nouns are there verbs are there like uh, what other the part of speeches are also there similar way here also the noun parts of uml are represented through the structural language structural things so what are the structural things in the sense structural things are the nouns of uml model so it's a graphical language now that's why the nouns of this graphical language are what are that structural things so these are very static parts of the modeling so complete modeling can be divided into two parts that is structural modeling as well as the behavioral modeling that's why to do the structural models with the with the help of this static part of the systems those are through the help of structural things so these elements are they either conceptual or physical physically so it may be represent in terms of concepts as well as physical so there there are seven kinds of structural things are there what are the different seven kinds in the sense list of the names so that is classes classes one is classes second one is interface second one is interface third one collaborations collaborations fourth one use cases fifth one active classes sixth one components and seventh one nodes these are the seven structural things are there first one is class second one interface third one use case fourth one collaboration fifth one active class sixth one component and seventh one last one is node these are the structural things so one thing structural things are seven these are the known parts of uml so let us see one by one the first one is class so the class is very basic what is the element of object oriented analysis and design that's why uml is also focus on the first very basic concept is class so what is a class a class is a set of objects similar objects so a class is a description of set of similar object that share the same attributes so same attributes operations and relationships and semantics so the class is a class is set of description of set of similar objects similar objects suppose a fruit is a class so under that what are the objects are there generally so those are apple is also the object banana is also the object as well as another fruit uh, like uh, orange is also the object for the class fruit instead of all these fruits we call a class as a fruit so there there's a similar properties are there similar uh, properties is nothing but here attributes of the objects right so that's why say class is graphically denoted as a rectangular box a class is denoted as rectangular box like this rectangular box which can consists of three compartments here the notation is very important notation is very important that's why here a class is a set description of set of objects so it can be denoted as a rectangular box which can consists of what are the three compartments one two three like the three compartments each compartment has its value so the first one is used for name of the class name of the class second one is used for attributes set the attributes a class has a attribute a class has a set of attributes 
So suppose fruit class, a class has a attributes, what are that? The color, taste, size, shape, like this. All are the attributes of the class. So operations, third compartment is used for operations of the class. Operations of the class. Set of classes, what the class can do. So the, suppose the class, fruit class, the operations of the fruit class may be operation, may be what is the taste of the fruit. So that is a, one of the operation of the class. So like that way we have to uh, use the notations for the classes. So next structural thing is, what is that? Second one is interface. Interface. What is an interface? Interface is a collection of operations that specify a particular service of the class. Particular service of the class. So this can be denoted by a small circle. It is denoted by a small circle followed by the name. That name is also start with, what is that? I letter. So, I letter. This is an interface. This is an interface. Next one, what is the next one? Collaboration. Third one is collaboration. Collaboration defines an interaction. It is an interaction. If we describe the interactions, it can be denoted by dotted ellipse. It can be denoted by like this dotted ellipse. It can be denoted by dotted ellipse followed by name of the collaboration name of the collaboration it is used in the object interaction so message posing so one may object is interact with another object there definitely we define some collaborations we define some collaboration there in that particular situations we use that collaborations so next one is use case use case so very uh, common term we use in the functional requirements of uh, uh, software system. Identification of functional requirement as well as designing of that uh, requirements, we use that use cases generally. So the use case, what is that? It is the fourth, what is that? Structural thing. The first one is class over. Second one is an interface. Third one, collaboration. Fourth one is use case. So, what is that use case? Use case is collection of actions. Collection of actions. In another way, a set of sequence of actions performed by an actor is called a use case. Is called an use case. Use case is a collection of actions or set of sequence of actions performed by an actor. Always the use case is performed by an actor. This actor may be the human being or a system. So the use cases are denoted by ellipse. Denoted by ellipse. Ellipse. Ellipse notation. So the are followed by the name or otherwise within the notation we may write that name of the use case. Actor notation is like the symbol. The person notation followed by actor name followed by actor name. This is about that use case. Suppose withdraw is an use case. Withdraw is an use case it, from the bank management system. Who can perform this withdraw operation? Generally by the customer. With respect to customer, withdraw is an use case. Both are connected one to another, one to another, right? So reading is a uh, what is that withdraw or pass the examination is an use case. It is performed by the student like that. Any use case performed by one actor. Actor may be the human being or as well as a system also. This is the fourth structural thing of uh, UML. Right. So next to go for one more structural thing that is active class. What is an active class? It is similar to class. It is similar to class. See that notation is also similar to class. Now, what is the another way we have to put as class, uh, active class? In the sense, active class it has objects, no? So, every class has also the objects because a class is a set of similar objects. So, that's why active class is also the class, first of all. That's why which can contains what is that objects. But the objects can initiate its own flow of control. Wherever the 
parallel uh, mechanism inter process communications like uh, the objects are involved in that process communications then we have to use such a type of objects put in the form of active class but the notation differ how it is differ in the sense the outline of the class this outline of this class is thick line it is a thick borders which can contains the thick borders wherever the parallel work is happen then that such a type of objects are put in the form of uh, active class objects so up to now class is over interface then what is that collaboration after that use case then what is that active class five structural things are we know so next let's go for one more what is that uh, 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 structural thing that is component that is component a component is physical and replaceable part of the system a component is a physical and replaceable part of the system so it it, it, it graphically it is denoted like this symbol what it is actually it is a rectangular box it is a rectangular box which have two tabs which have two tabs that is two tabbed rectangular box two tabbed rectangular box it is a component denotion so component denotion so component may be any dll files this library files and executable files and the database tables as well as what are the uh, files we have to maintain in our system those may be represent in terms of components in the object oriented analysis and design through uml so last one is last structural thing is node so node node is a physical element it is a physical element so in the software development process so after completion of our product how this project will execute so it, it it can be installed in some physical devices okay so those physical devices in the deployment view of the system the physical aspects of the system represent with the help of these nodes okay so the nodes node is represented graphically it is a cube how can represent that node in terms of the cubes in terms of cube any things like uh, personal computers laptops otherwise any modems any old printers any physical devices are need to run the uh, software so our product so that can be represent with the help of these nodes so these are the seven structural things so what are that list out the name of the structural things class one is class class second one is interface class interface collaboration collaboration use case active class component node so these are the seven structure things are discussed in this class so next what kind of things are there how many number of things are there how many kinds of things how many kinds of things first one is structural things behavioral things grouping things and notational things structural things are over then go for behavioral things what about behavioral things behavioral things are the dynamic part of the system dynamic part of the system behavioral things are the dynamic parts of the system dynamic parts in the sense the verbs of the model the verbs of the model is a uml is a graphical language this language verbs are represent with the help of behavioral things with the help of behavioral things so the behavioral thing can also be divided into two kinds those are messages or interactions then the states the set of messages are represent with the help of interactions another one is states the set of states is also represent with the help of state machine with the help of state machine so these are the two kinds of uh, behavioral things are there those are represent the verbs of uh, uml so what is meant by interaction so it is a behavior which can contain set of messages 
exchanged among the set of objects. The messages are exchanged among the objects. Those can be represented with the help of interactions. An interaction contains a set of messages transferred from one object to another object or otherwise share the messages among the number of objects. How it can be represented? It's a graphical language. No? That's why everything may be represented in terms of different notations. What are the notations are used for uh, interaction? That is a solid line with arrow. With arrow. Solid line with arrow. That is solid arrow. Represent with solid arrow. It is a representation of an interaction. It is a representation of one interaction. Then go for state machine. Second one is state machine. What is a state machine? It is also the behavioral thing. It is also the verb of, verbal form of the behavioral thing. So the state machine, what is a state machine? State machine is the behavior which can specify a sequence of states. That is a set of states are there. State machine consists of a set of states. So an object or the interaction which goes through the, its lifetime and responses to events together its responses to those events. In the sense simply a state machine consists of sequence of states or what are the parallel states are also. What is a state? A state is a situation or a condition of a particular an object during the lifetime of an object how the uh, object states the behavior in terms of the state in the sense in a particular situation how it looks like an object say suppose a fan is an object which can which which have during the lifetime of an up on an fan an object to fan it has on state and off state so on state and off state the behavior of the object suppose now uh, what is that whenever we put the uh, switch then automatically it is uh, comes into on state. So switch of the uh, button in the sense automatically it comes into off state. So like that based on the event. See here response to event during the lifetime of object response to events that object is moved from one state to another state. Such a type of states are there in the state machine. So it is denoted as rounded rectangle. Only the corners are rounded. The corners are rounded for this one. So that's why this is called rounded rectangle. Only the corners are rounded. So this is called state machine. This is called state machine. So how many structural things are there? Seven structural things. Those are class, interface, collaboration, use case, active class, component, node. So behavioral things are two. Those are style in what is that first one is an interaction second one is state machine so next kind of things are grouping things next kind of things are grouping things what is the grouping thing grouping thing is a mechanism it can be defined as a mechanism to group the elements of the model to group the elements of the model together this is called grouping thing so it has only one grouping thing in the uml that is called package that is called a package so only one grouping thing so it is package so package is denoted as tabbed rectangle it is called tabbed rectangle tabbed rectangle so this is the notation of grouping thing next one is unnotational thing so what is that unnotational thing it is the last structural thing so unnotational uh, no, last parts of the things unnotational things it can be denoted or it can be denoted by what is that a note symbol like a folded rectangle it is a folded corner fold rectangle corner fold rectangle so it is a mechanism to capture the remarks descriptions and comments of the eml models so whatever the uh, elements we have to describe we have to put some comments on the particular element or the diagram or what else so that can be represent with the help of note symbol as usual in our uh, languages 
put the note symbol in our writing the description of any problems or any notes so they put that note n o t e note colon then write the description of the particular element here it is a graphical language that's why note is used for the description or comments of the particular element by using this notation here we may write some what is the descriptions and this is connected to particular element suppose we want to give the description for the class then put that class and connect it to the line then write the description of particular class like this a this is the unnotational note symbol so these are the things are there in the uml so basic building blocks what are the basic building blocks things relationships diagrams so that's why the first part of basic building blocks are over all kinds of things are known so then go for what kind of basic building blocks relationships let's now start that relationships what is relationship so relationship purpose is what is that so associate one element to another element how it is possible in the sense with the help of relationships in the uml we have to connect one element to another element by using the relationship that's why the relationship is also very most basic building block of uml it shows how number of elements are associated with each other each other function so that's why what are the different connectivity purpose we have to use that relationships there are four kinds of relationships are there the four kinds association first one is association relationship second one is dependency relationship third one generalization relationship fourth one realization relationship these are the four kinds of relationships are there first one is association relationship second one dependency relationship third one generalization relationship fourth one realization relationship these are the four kinds of relationships are there in the uml so first one association relationship where we have to use normally we know one object or one concept is connected to another concept by using the relationship association between association between the objects between the classes so what is that association so association is a general relationship it is a structural relationship so anywhere we have to put that relationship in general we put that association relationship so it is denoted by what is that solid line with direction so navigation so in both sides may use or single side single direction is also used or without directions only the solid line is also we may use for the representation of an association right it's a static relationship it is a static relationship so next one is dependency relationship so second kind of relationship is dependency relationship it is also called using relationship wherever one class objects are depends on another class objects so the implementation of the operations is also depends on another class then we have to put that relationship as dependency relationship so what are that the target dependency relationship has two parts that is target class and as well as the what is that source source and target suppose we may write here this is the source class this is what is that the destination class target class the one class objects are affected by another classes so then we have to put that the dependency relationship how it can be represented in the sense by using the dotted line with head arrow so dotted line with arrow this is called dependency relationship so next one is generalization relationship what is that generalization relationship it is also called parent child relationship or generalization bar specialization relationship or base class root class relationship wherever the inheritance concepts are used then we have to put that relationship as generalization so parent class child class base class root class 
as well as inheritance it it may be the single inheritance and multiple inheritance multi level inheritance whatever that one class objects are derived from another class objects then we go for generalization relationship generalization relationship so how it can be denoted in the sense solid line with arrow head halo head halo arrow head this is called halo arrow head the notation is different here one notation definitely difference with another notation because every notation has its individual meaning so every notation is unique one notation is differ with another notation because it is what is that graphical language that's why every notation has its specific meaning so next to go for realization relationship what is that realization relationship in the sense so it is mostly what is that generalization properties as well as what is the dependence properties are put together and make it as realization or relationship how we can denote it that realization denotion in the sense dotted line dotted line with arrow arrow head dotted line with arrow arrow head this is called realization relationship next what is that next basic concepts of conceptual model of uml what is that conceptual model of uml tells us conceptual model of uml give tells us what is that first one is things second one relationships third one diagrams so first one structural things behavioral things grouping things unnotational things different kinds of things are discussed next what is that relationships are association relationship generalization relationship dependency relationship then realization relationship these are the relationships are also covered next to go for diagrams what about the diagrams what are the diagrams diagrams are used for representation of the models representation of the models generally a diagram is a graph so a graph contains set of vertices as per our set theory a graph can be denoted as a g which can consists of set of vertices and set of edges v is set of vertices e is set of edges a graph contains what is that set of vertices and set of edges so as for the same concept apply here in the uml unified modeling language a graph can consists of vertices and the things similar way a diagram is also consists of things and relationships so things and relationships all vertices are the things of our uml all edges are relationships of our uml so things are structural things behavioral things grouping things unnotational things here how many kinds of relationships are there association dependency generalization next one is uh, uh, realization relationship these are the things these are the relations are there in our diagram cml diagrams here two kinds of uml diagrams are there structural diagrams as well as behavioral diagrams so structural diagrams explain the static part of the system behavioral diagrams explains the behavioral part of the system let's start that structural diagrams so structural diagrams explain the static part of the system static view of the system so total uh, it is a uml is also used for architecture of the system so can architect the system in the sense the different views are required those views are also static can be divided into static views as well as the dynamic views that's why the static views of the system described by the structural diagrams so how many structural diagrams are there so four kinds of structural diagrams are there the first one is class diagram second one object diagram third one component diagram fourth one deployment diagram these are the diagrams gives of the structural aspects of the system object diagram as well as a class diagram component diagram and one more is deployment 
diagram. These four diagrams explains the structural parts of the system. Let's go for behavioral diagrams. How many number of behavioral diagrams are there? So behavioral diagrams always the explains the dynamic part of the system. Dynamic part of the system, the behavior of the system, the complete functionality of the system is explained with the help of behavioral diagrams. So how many number of behavioral diagrams are there? So what are the different kinds of behavioral diagrams? The first one is interaction diagrams. Interaction diagrams. What are the interaction diagrams? The complete interaction view with respect to interactions. One object is interact to another object or one for a particular conversation, how many number of objects are interact? How many number of interactions are possible among the number of objects? So suppose for a particular case, four number of objects are involved. Among the four number of objects, how many interactions are possible? How many times the objective is in a place an object active role? So such a type of things are placed in the interaction diagram. So again, the interaction diagrams are also two kinds. What are the two kinds of interaction diagrams are? First one is sequence diagram. Second one is collaboration diagram. These are the two kinds of interaction diagrams. One is sequence diagram. Another one is collaboration diagram. Okay. So next one is active diagram, activity diagram. Next one is activity diagram. The flow of control is represented by the activity diagram. Next one is use case diagram. Use case view is described by the use case diagram. Next one is state chart machine or state chart diagram or simply state machine diagram. It is also called state chart diagram. State chart diagram. So these are the different ty types of diagrams are there. Four Static, I mean structural diagrams, four structural diagrams, five, one, two, three, four, five. What is that? Behavioral diagrams. Behavioral diagrams. Total nine diagrams are there in the UML. Total nine diagrams. So, kinds of diagrams. Let us see one diagram, definition to other diagram. So, what is a class diagram? Class diagram, any time a diagram definition which can consist of a diagram is nothing but a graph which can consist of set of what is that vertices as well as set of edges. So as the name itself, all, all vertices are the what is that things, all edges are the relationships. So that's why as the name itself, class diagram, class diagram is a diagram first of all which can contain stuck classes the things are the classes which can contains the classes interfaces and what is that collaborations and their relationships classes interfaces collaborations and their relationships so these are, this is called class diagram class diagram is a diagram which can contains classes interfaces collaborations and what is that relationship Class diagram is a structural diagram. No static aspects of the system is described by the class diagram. That's why it is a structural diagram. No structural diagram in the sense as the name itself, structural things are there. Now see, the class is a structural thing. So interface is also the structural thing. Collaboration is also the structural thing. And connect one to other by the relationship. It may be the association or it may be the dependency or generalization, otherwise realization is also possible to use that class diagram, to draw the class diagram. So a diagram is a diagram which can contains of things and the relationship. Here things are the structural things for the structural diagrams and the relationships are based on our EML uh, rules as well as the common mechanism. Only some of the relationships are uh, possible among the classes or among the interfaces or among the what are that other objects of the diagrams other elements of the diagram structural diagram contains structural things and their relationships behavioral diagrams can consist what is that behavioral things and their relationships 
So that's why class diagram is a structural diagram. Only structural things are contained. Among the seven structural things, only three structural things are used in our class diagram as per their requirement, as per their name of the class diagram. Right. So next to go for object diagram. What is object diagram? First of all, it is also the structural diagram. It also explains the static process view of the system. As the name itself, a diagram contains vertices and edges. So a diagram contains here the all vertices are the things, all edges are the relationships. As the name of the diagram, object diagram, which can contain the structural thing as an object. Object is also the structural thing, no? So that's why the object diagram is a, a diagram which can contain the objects and their relationship. See, object diagram is a collaborated with the objects and the, it is also similar to class diagram. Next, to go for component diagram. See, this component diagram is also the structural diagram. So, the structural diagram, the structural element of the uh, thing element of the concept is what is the structural element or structural thing is component as the name component diagram it also explain the static implementation view of the system the component diagram contains a set of components components and their relationship always things and their relationships diagram contains things and their relationship that's why what is that here the set of set of components and their relationship. It shows that the implementation view of the system. So next one is deployment diagram. What is deployment diagram? Deployment diagrams are set of nodes and their relationship. It also explain the deployment view of the system, how physically the system runs. So that is there in the deployment view. So the deployment diagram consists deployment View consists of uh, nodes and uh, what is that? Their relationship. Nodes are also static parts and as well as structural thing. So structural diagram contains structural things and uh, behavioral diagrams contains behavioral things as per the name of the diagram. Next to go for behavioral diagrams, the use case diagram. Use case diagram is also consists of use cases, actors, and their relationship. See here, use cases, actors, and their relationships. Use case diagram explains the use case view of the system. It model that use case system, model the systems or subsystem for the particular application. We can model a complete system, uh, use case diagram for a com uh, complete system or use case diagram may draw for an application and subsystem of that particular application. So next one is sequence diagram. So what is sequence diagram? Sequence and collaboration diagrams are an interaction diagram. So both are interaction diagrams. Particularly sequence diagram is focus on time ordering of the messages. It is focus on time ordering of messages. Here it uh, this diagram have number of what is that messages? Those messages are ordered in sequential passion one to another one two three four like that so sequential passion so but collaboration diagrams are also interaction diagram so which can concentration on how many number of objects are involved that means the structure of the objects focus on structural aspects of the objects structural aspects of the objects this is there in the collaboration and the sequence diagram shows the sequences of actions, sequences of messages are in both the diagrams are isomorphic diagrams. Both diagrams are isomorphic diagrams. Next, we go for state chart diagram or state machine diagram. State machine diagram is what is that when the events are occur, how the objects are moved from one state to another state. So that is the behavior. The behavior with respect to states are there in the state chart diagram. It is also explain the behavior part of the system, particularly state machine view of the system. Right. So here the state diagram contains state machines and their relationships. State machines as well as their relationships. So that is called state chart diagram. 
next what is that activity diagram so the activity diagram describe the flow control of the system describe the flow controls of the system here it, it this activity diagram contains activities and the tasks and their links so one how the uh, uh, flow is there in the work so that simply work flow we may call simply work flow diagram so how the work case flow from one step to another step it is in terms of activities in terms of activities every notation every term has its own what is the definition is there in the uml so the action is performed the uh, complete behavior is in terms of activities behavior is in terms of states behavior is in terms of interaction behavior is in terms of actions so how it is in the sense different diagrams are shows different views of the system different views of the system so next part of the conceptual model of uml gives us rules next part is rules what are the rules of uml so rules has we have to follow the rules uh, then what is that draw the models or design the models the rules are applicable for names so here names are very important so the names are also from the problem domain we have to take and put the name for the particular class or the particular element of the concepts so that's why particularly we put the rules for names so name is unique name from seeing the name we can understand something it is so so on purpose we have to model so the names are also from the problem domain we have to take and put that's why the rules are applicable for what is that names names may be the simple names or names may be the path names or names may be complex okay those all are from the problem domain only so no name uml for scope so within the boundary we have to design based on the boundary of the system we have to design a models or we have to create the models so then the visibility by seeing that uh, the model we can uh, know something we can understand the things so that's why the visibility also important so by the seeing that model we can uh, understand so on so on purpose this model is defined the by seeing the structure we can what is that understand something what we can go for the system so that's why the visibility is also very important so that's why we have to apply the rules for visibility also next the visible integration that is integrity so how one element is combined with another element so group of the elements the integrity is also very important to develop the model in the sense so apply the integrity rules apply the rules for integrity apply the rules for execution so that is is also important rules for rules for names rules for scope rules for visibility rules for integrity rules for execution all are very important so whenever we develop a model in the sense we have to follow these rules so that is the intention of conceptual model of uml so next last concept of uh, conceptual model of uml is common mechanisms common mechanisms so always what is the need of these common mechanisms in the sense we have to apply what are the defined common mechanisms are also there so those are uh, apply for the models in the development okay to develop the models we have to apply the common mechanism complete conceptual model of eml what tells us in the sense so using the things using the things using the basic building blocks and follow the rules apply the common mechanisms then we have to build the model there is a major intention of this conceptual model of eml so under that common mechanisms what are the common mechanisms are there defined common mechanisms in the eml are four what are the four kinds of common mechanisms are first one is so specifications always apply the uh what is that specifications anywhere in the models we have to apply the specifications means we have to specify the things specify the things specify the relationships specifications for all things for all relationships in mandatory in the uml so that's why specifications next adornments extra things we have to add 
for the basic elements you can beautify the models by applying the what is that ordered mans so next common divisions generally the while uh, uh, analyze and while uh, designing here the basic object oriented analysis and design put on the com concentrate on the common division either it may be the uh, classes or it may be the objects or it may be the implementation or what else then what is that extensibility mechanism last one is extensibility mechanism let us see one by one so specifications specifications provide some textual statements describing or interesting the aspects of the system see here so this is what is that element is the computer so for this an object we have to give the specification what is the uh, operating system is there what is the cpu configuration what is the memory capacity or how much storage it, it, it shows what is the what type of cameras we have to use like that the things are uh, what are the elements inside that what are the parts inside that so specifically specify individual parts that is for understanding purpose it is very easy so that's why we have to give the specifications for the basic elements similar way adornments what about these adornments for extra basic things for basic things we have to add some extra features so that is called adornments example so by using the adornments what is that explicit visual representation for a basic elements we have to add some visual effects then so then by seeing that one we can understand very easily very effective understanding is also possible whenever we have to apply the adornment for the basic elements see here for example this is only the association for this association relationship put as a role so an employee put as role an employer here assume that there there are two classes are connected by this association relationship right so the role of this class on the association is employee the class association is employer so this is multiplicity add other things as multiplicities for association class so these are called adornments for the particular basic element for association then what is that common divisions what are the common divisions are there so common in the object oriented analysis and design so while ana analyze the things uh, in that process of analysis the common divisions are also required those common divisions always classes and objects or interfaces and implementations interfaces and implementations so these are the common divisions are there in the uml next one is extensibility mechanism extensibility mechanism as the name itself extend the things so for the as, as usual things what is there for that one you can extend something extend the vocabulary of the system extend the properties of the system extend the properties of the system extend the syntax of the system so those can be represent by using the extensibility mechanism we have to apply these extensibility mechanisms for the elements of the uml what are the different kinds of extensibility mechanisms so that is first one is stereotypes second one tagged values third one constraints these are the three what are the extensibility mechanisms so let us see one by one so first one is stereotype what is stereotype so stereotype is an extensibility mechanism extensibility mechanism which can helps to uh, extend the vocabulary of the system extend the vocabulary of the system see here the domestic vocabulary simply extend the vocabulary of the system so it is a class notation it's so a generally class notation the stereotype is used by gilitments the representation is very important by using the gilitments left side right side shifts symbol that is gilitments so put as a name so just in just, nowadays for any what is the string is there followed by a string a name followed by the string by seeing the name by seeing the string we can uh, think so on so on the meaning of the name so that's why that is put in the form of what is that billets man extend the vocabulary of the system suppose nowadays for a movies name of the movies 
followed by a caption so followed by the caption similar way all type of this captions are represent in our uml by using the stereo types so next to go for tagged values tagged values is also the what is that extensibility mechanism these are extend the properties of the things extend the properties of the things like uh, what is that building blocks uh, what is that the tagged values create the new attributes wherever the extend the properties of the system we have to use the tagged values tagged values representation by using the parenthesis by using the parenthesis almost all cases whatever that extend the uh, uh, the number the version number example so suppose this is the class name class name followed by by using the flower of by using the normal parenthesis and give the name of the version so that is the example of tagged values next one is next kind of what is that extensibility mechanism is constraints constraints are extend the concepts as well as extend the what is that uh, uh, syntax of the system so this can be represented by using the what is that flower bracket by using the flower brackets see here what is that we put the constraint we put the particular constraint on the part on the particular element suppose add delete so we have to add only 2000 copies or 2000 what is that 20000 of copies for the particular model so like that way put the constraint on this put the constraint on this particular operation put the constraint on this particular operations so then uh, by using that ocl language generally ocl object constraint language using that object constraint language we have to write the constraint uh, on the particular element these are the extensibility mechanisms so up to now the conceptual model of uml what gives us in the sense the conceptual model of uml consists of basic building blocks rules common mechanisms basic building blocks what are that things relationships diagrams so by using the things and uh, follow the rules apply the common mechanism we have to build the good models that is the major concept of conceptual model of eml thank you like share and subscribe hit the bell icon for more updates